Have you ever watched the Wooden Boat Experience videos and felt like some info was missing? We have a Patreon page where members get extra content, including videos, which are not publicly released. I no longer am on Facebook or Instagram. Instead, what used to be posted there is now posted on the Glasgow Patreon page. I would call it a blog. Videos are released early and much more happens there. At the end of this episode, I'm including a video which was Patreon only, episode 2.5 of season 4. You can join the Wooden Boat Experience community on Patreon for as little as $2 a month. I use the money collected from Patreon to try to make the Wooden Boat Experience better. Patreon works on your computer, your phone, and your tablet. Check it out. I'm making the last two weeks all public so you can see what you missed. Enjoy episode 4 of season 4, and don't forget, at the end, watch episode 2.5, Patreon only. You may have noticed a new Lyman sitting in my driveway. It is a 1966 25-foot sleeper, which we purchased at the boat auction at this year's Antique Boat Museum boat show. Let's talk about my Lyman situation. Gary towed the Lyman back and worked on removing it from the trailer. I was driving tour boat most of this time. My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The wooden boat experience. We started and ran the small block Ford engine, making sure it was okay as we were told. As you can see, the boat is in really good condition, except for some areas of the hull, which we can fix. Now, no creep on the prop either. Boy, it sounds nice. I think that's a high five moment. <laughs> that could have been a nightmare if that didn't run. Puck, puck, bang, bang. <laughs> level, level, level. Here's where the Lyman situation becomes a Lyman problem. As you know, I already own a 26 foot sleeper, which is in the intro, and you've seen it many times on the wooden boat experience. I've worked on it a lot. I pulled the engine out last fall in anticipation of doing some work on the hull and engine stringers. To get a second opinion, I took Jimmy Grant Jr. down to the 26-foot sleeper when he was here this summer, and we really looked it over. This is what we found. Bad engine stringers, much worse than I thought. The shear clamp still has rot that needs to be replaced. Many short strake repairs in the past, too many and too close together and too many butt blocks. Strake replacement needs to be done. Epoxy coating on the inside of the keel, who knows what's underneath there. Bow ribs that are rotted, lower cabinetry plywood rot, floor beam rot, floor plywood needs to be replaced and new surface added to it, whether that's paint or vinyl. Varnish failure on the interior. This is a long list. It has good areas, mostly work I've done since I got it over the last three years. It has a good engine. It's a sentimental valued boat in need of a huge amount of work. On the other hand, the work on the 25 is a matter of a few weeks. And then that boat will be really nice and ready for eight to 10 years of use with just some varnish and some paint. It needs some strake replacement, a few ribs at the turn of the chine, and the bottom eight inches of the transom. This is not hard stuff to do. I bought Gary's half of the 25 and it is now mine. And that will be the boat that I use next summer. Here's the problem. I've got a 25 that I want to keep in my driveway and a 26 in storage that I don't know what I'm going to do with. But I know I'm not fixing it right now. Time for musical Lyman chairs.
So according to this tape measure, I've got the back of the boat up high enough. We need 31 inches to be safe, which we have right there, because the height of the trailer bunks, worst case scenario, is 31 inches. That's where they are right now. Not easy to use a tape one-handed. So that's at 31 inches right now. The problem is the front's not up high enough. So right now we are going to jack the front up a little bit at a time, support that, get it up high like this one was when we pulled that out. You can see how much clearance there is there, not as much here. Well, hopefully, <clears throat> man, my voice is almost gone. Hopefully we've got everything jacked up the right amount. Spec, don't go under there. You can see it looks a little high, the bunks, but we still got to lift the trailer up in the front, which will bring the back of the bunks down to more about the height of these and the where the front is. So we're going to take our time. As you can see, we can only go back underneath right now about two and a half feet, and then we will move this stand farther back. We'll do it a little bit at a time. We'll probably bring a third stand in and um, put it in between while we move that one. It's a little bit of a time till we get farther and then we'll actually do it in between each of the, the uh, cross members. Takes a while. Well, that spot looks empty now. Excellent. Now we got room to build a building. I think you just gotta cut it around, you'll be good. There's the spot, there's Gary's boat. According to the internet, I can just put Bondo in those two holes. It'll be fine. That's good. Well, I got the 26 covered up. Got an old blue tarp from Jay that I put on first that's full length. And then I put the silver tarp on top of that. Should be able to breathe still. It's not trapping any moisture in there and hopefully I got it all folded properly so the water will, will bleed off and down and not catch anywhere. Lest you think this all happened in a single day, it didn't. Each session of getting the boats on or off was two to three hours and tiring as it is dangerous and requires a lot of concentration. At minimum for next year, the decks will need varnish. Eventually, they'll need to be stripped and stained and varnished because the stain doesn't match. The hull obviously needs some attention. So 
So we've got the antifreeze in that bucket. <clears throat> you can see the hose comes over here. You shut that one off right there, and that's where the water comes in from the river usually. This is the water from the hose. So shut that one off, turn this one on, and then we're only feeding the engine from the antifreeze. We did have this thing running before. that into there call it good see if it'll start after being fogged Welcome to the Wooden Boat Experience. Well, with the season under her belt, unbeknownst it looks pretty good. It's definitely worthwhile putting the cover on every time. As you can see, the varnish looks great. The paint looks good. Everything from total boat really stood up well. And I am so happy with the boat. I am going to miss it next year. But it is heading to Keuka Lake. Hobie, Megan, and Collins, you are going to be very lucky to have this boat at your dock. And I can't wait to stop down every time and use it. down here. I've got a window to go out. Storm just passed. I'm taking a ride. I think I timed it just right to get out here and enjoy a quick ride. The storm went that way. The rainbows are over there. We are not going to dare head towards the rainbows. We're going to head this way.
something to smile about so you can avoid that. Any, not many people are left at the dock at this point. That doesn't mean we can get sloppy on Flemish in our lines. Become a dock tosser. Nobody likes a dock tosser. But 
never seen anybody trip over a Flemish line. for dinner. Oh, I'm so glad I made my way down here to take the boat out. Rain like crazy at my house. And it looked like anything but a night to go boating. And I am so glad that I did. You can see this tells us exactly how much is in this round tank. about a gallon, gallon and a half of gas well, on this trip tonight. Fuel shut off. Need to shut the power off and get the cover on. And that's it.